Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is video two from day four. I hope by now everyone is feeling wonderful. I can tell you uh, are probably seeing the changes that are coming through your body and through your mind. About day four, day five is really when it starts to happen. It's, uh, this is about the moment in time really when if you've ever done an intense workout or yoga session you get right down into the most intense part. That's where we're at in this juice fast, juice cleanse right now. And I hope you're feeling great, really enjoying the changes that are happening and seeing how this could become a integral part of your future and a healthy lifestyle. So, you know, I hope everyone's getting that benefit out of this program so far. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, sugar in this video. I'm sure some of you have noticed uh, some sugar withdrawals going through the fast. You will get uh, some sugar from fruits, but uh, combined with all the other things that are in the fruit, it's more of a synergistic reaction that you get from those and uh, not like uh, anything like the processed sugars we're so used to eating in, in this country. As a society, I'm sure you would agree we are completely addicted to sugar. Um, it's in everything we eat. Sodas, candies, pastries, it's in everything. All high, fruct high fructose corn syrup that we discussed some yesterday, it's on almost everything you see in the supermarket unless it's in the produce aisle. So what happens in this, um, in this fast is that you will start to feel uh, sugar, you know, being replaced out of your diet, which is a really good thing, and it allows you to see some of the things that you are addicted to in, in the ways of sugar. Um, how sugar works a lot is, uh, is we get addicted to it as kids. You know, it's a lot like selling cigarettes. They can't sell cigarettes to kids. It's illegal. So what they do instead is get kids addicted to sugars through uh, cereals, through candy. I know when I was a little boy I was all about candy. I love some Nerds and Starburst and I still to this day have a uh, craving sometimes for some uh, candy. And So what they do is get us addicted as kids and then once you have someone addicted as a kid you have a lifelong customer. So that's what you're seeing now is uh, all throughout uh, the country are lifelong customers that were addicted as kids and are still addicted to sugar. Now a lot of people ask if if sugar wasn't good for us and made us sick and fat, how come it tastes so good? Why do we crave it so much? And that's because our ancestors, it's not your fault, it's our ancestors' fault. But if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here, so we gotta thank them. What happened uh, when we had a hunter-gatherer society? You had a feast and famine. You would have, uh, you know, the feast season where you would have plenty to eat, and um, you would uh, get all of your sugars and, you know, kind of fatten up. And then you would, because you did that because you knew you were getting ready to go through the famine. And then you would, uh, you know, go without food. And as we did that, it would burn those sugars off and gave us energy throughout the cold winter or whatever it may be. But now, in our society, we have plenty of sugar, lots of feast, but no famine. We just keep taking in and uh, we don't ever burn it off. So that's what's happening now. We're becoming very obese as a society. A lot of it has to do with these uh, processed sugars that we consume over and over and over again. A lot of that come from sodas. Um, if you drink sodas normally, or diet sodas even, I would highly suggest, strongly urge you to stop drinking those as much as possible. Um, one thing that you will find in diet sodas especially, is uh, the product aspartame. And I want to talk a little bit about aspartame because it is the most dangerous food additive that uh, is in our food today. It makes up uh, approximately 75% of food additive complaints to the FDA. So I want you to watch out for aspartame. Look for it on your sodas or drinks or whatever you may be and uh, just stay away from it because I'll give you a little history about it and uh, what happens. So, 
It was first discovered in 1965 by James Schlittler, a, a, a chemist working for a G.D. Searle company. And um, it was first approved in um, 74 to be put into food and drinks. But um, it got put on hold from... Um, there were some neuroscientists who objected to it. And then there was some investigations into the research practices of uh, the Searle company who was promoting the, the product. So it got put on hold and then around 85 it got added into uh, food products and drink products and it was bought my, around that time by Monsanto, our good friend Monsanto who we'll talk a little bit about tomorrow. And then uh, once Monsanto got a hold of it, it started to take off it's now in nearly everything. You'll see it in almost every diet soda. Mixed with caffeine is a very dangerous concoction. Um, a lot of symptoms, including seizures and death, are involved, have been reported. Other things that happen, headaches, nausea, vertigo, depression, heart palpitations, anxiety, vision problems, slurred speech, you know, it sounds something very dangerous. In you, you know, uh, pilots even now know that they uh, know better than to drink it. They know it could affect their their flying ability. So pilots is well known that amongst each other don't drink diet sodas because it could affect their flying. So I highly recommend staying away from diet sodas, aspartame, and as much processed sugar as you can. You know, it's okay to enjoy things here and there as you go, but just be aware of, of what you're eating, how much sugar's in it, and uh, of course, juice, 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 juice. That's right, happy juicing, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.